So, what makes heavy, heavy? This is a question that has fascinated me for many, many years now because everyone has their own definition of what heavy music is to them. It's an inherently personal thing and everyone defines it differently. A piece of music that is heavy to me, you may not think is heavy at all. Metallica, Black Sabbath, Slipknot, Deftones, Meshuggah, Gojira, Napalm Death, Emperor, all considered to be heavy bands, some of the biggest in music history, but they all sound so different. So what is it that triggers this emotional response within us? The one that says, this is really heavy and I like it. Now I asked you guys on social media what you think about this and I'm gonna use some of the responses that you gave me to make a riff and then evolve it into the heaviest riff possible, in theory. And at the end of the video, I'd like you guys to tell me which version of the riff you think is the heaviest. Let's start with the obvious things like distortion. So what you just heard is gonna be our starting riff, the one that we're hopefully gonna evolve into something much, much heavier. It almost goes without saying that a fat distorted guitar riff backed up by an equally gritty bass is the foundation of something heavy. Something that sounds like this. Is probably gonna sound heavier than something like this. You also mentioned things like dissonance, tritones, and minor tonalities as things you associate with heavy. Now, for anyone without any music theory knowledge, dissonance and tritones kind of make a riff sound uneasy or evil. Whereas minor keys and scales generally make a riff sound sad. So a riff with a minor tonality should naturally sound heavier than a riff with a major tonality. Check out what happens to the riff when I flip it between major and minor. Okay, so moving beyond the obvious, some of you said that attitude makes riffs sound heavy. And I agree, but what's the best way to convey attitude in a heavy riff? Down pick everything. So like my buddy Hunter here says, few things are more metal than aggressively down picking every single note, even when you don't need to. James Hetfield and John Brown are well known for doing this, but they don't just do this for show. It actually sounds more aggressive. Check it out. Now, I've already done a video on this recently, but down tuning the riff changes things dramatically. And lots of you mentioned this too, that somehow there's just something about lowering the pitch of a riff that makes it sound more aggressive. George says, down tuning technically has nothing to do with how heavy a riff sounds, but I'll be damned if drop A chugging doesn't hit me differently than standard. Something that pairs very well with down tuning is a slower tempo. Lots of you pointed out that a fast riff doesn't necessarily equal heavy, with many of you saying the opposite in fact. Henning says, for me, heaviness comes from a weighty rhythm with a fat, half time slow riff on it. So let's slow things down a bit and while we're at it, let's add in some gratuitous chugging because loads of you said that as well. Something else that you kept mentioning was simplicity and how it can affect the perceived heaviness of a riff. Patrick says, heavy should be simple. I think a simple riff makes a song sound huge. And I agree with this completely. I think some of the heaviest riffs in the world are also some of the simplest.
Simplicity also ties in very nicely with something else that loads of you guys mentioned too. Groove. Now, groove is quite hard to describe, but if you break it down, groove is kind of like a rhythm that you feel. It's the cool bit of the riff that makes you smile ear to ear and bob your head up and down and turn it up and, and listen to it over and over and over again. A more advanced form of groove is syncopation, and loads of you mentioned that it makes a riff sound way heavier too. For me, it's all about the right combination of syncopation and on-the-beat rhythms. So again, for anyone without any music theory knowledge, syncopation is basically a form of rhythmic displacement. Most notes in a riff or song usually fall on the beat, but with syncopation, some of those notes are offset and no longer line up with where we would expect them. This can create some really, really cool and interesting new rhythms and if it's used correctly it can sort of become like an advanced form of groove so if we use this in combination with notes that are already on the beat things can get very interesting let's see what happens when we apply it to the riff So, what makes heavy heavy? Well, lots of things it seems. Let me know what you think makes heavy heavy and which version of the riff you thought was the heaviest in the comments below. One last thing to mention, for lots of you, heavy seems to be associated with production more than anything else. And something that kept popping up in your responses was the importance of a good, well-balanced mix. And I agree, but for this video, I wanted to focus more on the riff, so I thought I'd mention it here at the end instead. Hopefully, my mediocre mixing skills are good enough. All right, that'll do it. I hope you're all well and staying safe if you're self-isolating or quarantining. The world is kind of crazy right now, and there's a lot going on. Anyway, subscribe button is up there, Patreon is up there. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, my name is Pete and I play music.